Hello and welcome to another modern video. Today we're going to be playing some Amulet. And uh, the card that I wanted to try, uh, people have been hyping up Unlicensed Hearse for a minute now. And the reason for doing so is because this card works out really, really well against Merc type, right? Like, so what it does is it stops your opponent from enabling Delirium, which is a really, really big deal for us because, you know, uh, a Holy Heat having Delirium is uh, 6 damage. And our boy over here is a 6-6. Six, six. We've done everything in the past in order to, <laughs> to play around on a Holy Heat since the card was printed. Even playing stuff like Savage Summoning or something like that, which was not very good. Um, so Unlicensed Hearst is a card that you can bring in and you play it on turn 2 and it just sits there stopping your opponent from having delirium and exiling two cards as opposed to one which relic does is a big deal for a couple of different reasons number one it's obviously twice as faster you can dig through through their graveyard and second of all this actually allows you to choose the target so you can uh, actually make sure that your opponent does not have access to delirium by exiling the card that they have only one copy of the, the card type that they have only one one copy of so it's a lot uh, more consistent and a lot more effective at dealing with uh, slowing down delirium, which is a big deal. And obviously, if you are afraid that your opponent is going to be dropping a Merc type anytime soon, you can just go after the Essence and Sorceries, and then your opponent only is going to have a 3-3 flyer, which is a lot easier to deal with. Besides that, in the main deck, you'll see that I'm not playing Karn. I, st I still do think that Karn is better. Uh, at least, I, I I really dislike using the word better. Uh, I think it, Karn is really well positioned right now. That's that's what I would say. And if I had a competitive event, I think that I would be playing any, a list with Karn. But I wanted to try out playing, you know, a list with Cultivator Colossus and just going a little bit more, um, more focused in a way. So where we have like a bunch of caverns in the main deck plus the fourth cavern in the sideboard. Just trying to make sure that we can beat those uh, Shadow and Merktide gamers which seem to have taken over the format right now. We're also playing two copies of Tolera West. This is because uh, I think that making sure that you're, you can chain Titans is very important, particularly against a deck like Four Color. And uh, that's why we are doing so. In the sideboard, uh, we have basically some pretty stock uh, decisions like we have dismember uh, against magus uh, force of vigor against a uh, hammer the mirror stuff like that endurance against the drc decks and whatnot extra copy of cultivator and emercool the promised land this is against the four color gamers um, and unit explosives uh, is, is just like a fantastic catch-all we have one copy and again i already talked about unlicensed hers we also have access to cavern of souls a third copy of Osage and radiant fountain in the sideboard and the reason to be playing a bunch of lands is because there's a bunch of matchups where we actually want to catch some number of Ursa Saga. And in those matchups, you still want to make sure that you have a reasonable amount of lands left in your deck. And uh, whenever you're cutting some number of Sagas, you can simply uh, bring in uh, your, your other lands from the sideboard and you can still uh, keep a consistent and solid ratio between the lands and spells. Uh, that's the deck list that we're going to be playing. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in supporting uh, my content as well, uh, you can find uh, information in the description down below about both uh, coaching sessions and for, for me to play any deck list of your choosing over here in YouTube or live on stream as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's play some magic. All right, what do we got here? Um, this hand is... Potentially serviceable, actually. So we have two green mana. We can go Saga into Boseju, Explore. The fact that we drew the Stronghold kind of sucks, but if we find a Bounce Land... No, but then, then our Saga is going to be destroyed, so... We're going to untap with one mana to short, so I think this is, this is just going to be a mulligan. Well, this is obviously going to be a mulligan. This hand that doesn't do anything at all, so ship it. Uh, this hand is the best one we've seen so far, so we're going to keep this one. The fact that we also have Castle really helps this hand out in a big way. So we're going to keep this one, definitely going to bottom the Valakut, and I actually, never mind, we're going to bottom, we're going to bottom Expedition Map and Asusa, I think. Because uh, because our, our lands enter the battlefield tap, we're not going to have a window to play the Asusa in, in, in a in a matter in, in a time that's gonna matter basically. Opponent goes Springleaf Drum. So we're gonna lead on Castle Garnbrick tapped. Or never mind. So if we go Saga on one, we can go play Saga, turn two, play Castle, play three, float a mana, 
play Gruul Turf, float the green mana, we're gonna have red mana floating plus colorless floating, so we, we, we can't yet tighten on three if we play Ursa Saga, because we're not gonna have enough green mana, so... Gracer does ramp us by one mana, but it does ramp us by one red mana in this case. Uh, so it does ramp us by one non-green mana, I guess would be a, a good way to think about it. So this means I'm going to be playing a turn four Primeval Titan. So yeah, this is awkward. The good thing is if I go turn one castle, that means I get to play a blocker against what is potentially hammer time over there. So I think that means that I should lead on Castle Garenbrig. No, I, I still I think I'm still gonna lead on Saga. And the reason for leading on Saga anyway, it's because I still think that I have a bunch of draws that uh, actually give me what I need in terms of um producing a Titan. Like if I draw an Asusa, if I draw a Summoner's Pact, this is going to produce a turn three primeval titan. So uh, that is obviously something that I'm interested in doing. Thoughtcast. Okay, so this is Affinity. This is not Hammer Time, which is probably a lot better for me because it means that it's a lot less likely that I'm going to die. Put in place second copy of Ursa Saga. That's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. I imagine they're going to make a construct here. They can swing in for two. Doesn't really do anything for the MSS percent only is a blank that doesn't do anything at all. So far, I'm not super scared about what's going on. Um, would love to draw a Dryad. Valakut doesn't do anything for me at all. So we're just gonna float a mana here, and I guess we're gonna get an amulet in play. And I'm just gonna play Gracer as a blocker. We're gonna get to prime time next turn. I can Vesuva my opponent's Ursa Saga, which is probably something I'm interested in doing. Oh, but if I do that, I'm not going to have enough green mana to transmute, uh, to, to, to castle next turn. So, play my land. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to play Gracer and play, uh, just replay the Castle Garenbrig, I think. Not the most exciting of turns, but I'm still going to be playing a Primeval Titan next turn. I can haste it if I want it, if I want to. Or I can uh, just uh, transmute for Toleria West. Uh, so I can set up a Dryad and then Dryad kills uh, my opponent's board state. This construct's gonna be big. These constructs, plural, are going to be big. So if my opponent has an untapped land here, they're gonna be able to make two constructs, which is really scary. I'm fairly confident I can raise this. Okay, so my opponent is not making a Construct now, so they're going to save to make Construct with the other Saga, I guess. Or are they going for the Shadow Spear? Maybe they're going for Shadow Spear so they can guarantee that they're getting in for some damage with Construct. So my best draw, I think, would be a Dry... Oh, Aether Spellbomb. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So my opponent is forced to activate Saga now. The Fairy Time Raveler in Affinity? It's a sick blowout. <laughs> I was not expecting the Time Raveler to show up. Well, my fawn has successfully been raveled. Wow. That's wild. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna play this Dryad and I think I'm just gonna do this and pass the turn. So now we're gonna have a couple of blockers. If my opponent wants to sack Spellbomb to bounce this, we can still chomp the Construct with Gracer so we don't die, which is important. And then next turn we have Prime Time going. Now we resolve Prime Prime Time. We start mowing down their creatures. I imagine it'll, it'll be good enough to Shadow Spear. That's, do they have the mana? Do they have the mana to equip? Okay. So if they let me chomp, I'm gonna take the chomp. Because next turn is going to be a lot harder to chomp. And if they attack with Memnite, just to, like, I'll, I'll take the free block for sure. Okay, so they, they set up these attacks. Let's block there. Let's chomp there. We're going to take one. <clears throat> Another Memnite post-combat. Kind of interesting. So I'm definitely incentivized to play the Amulet because it's going to net me mana after I resolve the Primeval Titan. And I think I'm just going to let my opponent draw a card. Their last card in hand could be exactly Metallic Rebuke. 
and if it is, we're gonna be, okay, Never mind. Okay, so they did that, so I'm just gonna play Amulet here, and this is gonna be, I think this is just gonna be lethal. So we're not gonna pay, because my opponent stepped out, so we don't care. We're gonna play a Bounce Land, and float three mana, play Dryad, replay the Bounce Land, make much more mana, bounce this. Uh, my opponent just, uh, they, they messed it up here. They, they needed to keep the, th the threat of activation was the only thing stopping me from doing, from just killing them here. But after they, like, they just got a little bit hasty. After they, you know, they tapped out and activated the thing, it's just... So th they could have, they could have stopped themselves from being dead, basically. Because if, if I do this, then they, they bounce my Dryad, then all of a sudden all of these Valakut, Valakut triggers are going to fizzle, and then maybe they can do something, but... Not really. <laughs> Alright, so Affinity. So we like Poseidju. I don't like Cultivator. I like Fountain. I like Forces, obviously. I like Engineered Explosives. I think this is it. Bog is gonna go. Cavern of Souls is gonna go. Uh, we can probably cut another Cavern and maybe one Asusa. I think I like Gracer as a blocker. I don't think they have that many answers to Saga, so I'm not too scared of that. I think I'm just going to cut an Asusa, because I think I value Gracer more highly. It's possible that on the draw, I'm supposed to just cut uh, just cut the... what's his name? This hand is kind of tempting. I think I'm going to keep it. Tron 1, ETB tap land. Seems like something I can beat. Uh, oddly enough, I think I'm just going to go Basic Forest instead of playing Saga, because I don't think I care about... Have an amulet in play just yet. Bunch of springleaf drums. Now I think we're gonna play the saga. Um, unless we wanna go. The constructs are probably not going to matter, but the mana for Force of Vigor is gonna matter. So I think I'm just gonna go Radiant Fountain and just we're gonna both sage you this right now. Maybe I should have done it on upkeep so they have to shock. I don't think. I don't think that two mana is gonna be the difference between winning this game and losing it, so. So what we're gonna do next turn is we're gonna go Splace Saga into Dryad into Gracer. Thought Monitor. It's not bad. I guess we don't want to play Gracer. Like this is just a card that we can pitch to Force. So there's no real reason to play Gracer and there's also no real reason to use Force just yet. So there's that. And play Wins for Peace and pass the turn. So we have the option here. We can use Force by pitching Gracer, we can hard cast the Force. Um, this seems fine to me. It means I don't get to Force anymore, but I don't think I care. Like if they minus on the Triad, fine, I just replay it. It's not that big of a deal. And their current board state is extremely non-threatening. So they can also bounce the Ursa Saga which is even better for me. Like, it's much better for them to bounce the Dryad here than it is to bounce the Ursa Saga, I think. Because if they bounce the Dryad, then this force is going to be delayed. Yeah, they, they bounce the Saga, which is it's so much better for me, because now I have to, I, I have the option to just hard cast force into... Ooh, yeah, that's a great force target. So we're just going to hard cast force into play Gracer. Definitely blowing up Saga, and I think we're going to blow up the... Thought, I guess the Thought Monitor doesn't really do anything. So I guess I'm just going to blow up... Um, I guess let, let's lead on Dryad attacking Teferi and see what my opponent does. Because if they don't do anything, I can just... Like, if they don't block with the Memnite, I can just, um, just pass a turn and I can force on their turn. Okay. So that happens. Um, if they have... Rebuke, they can actually cast it here. Hmm. So we're obviously blowing up the Saga, it's just a matter of the, what else do we want to blow up. I think I'm just gonna, gonna blow up the Thought Monitor. And I think uh, this is gonna make... Hmm. I guess it's not clear that I want to get an Amulet, so because of that I'm going to play a Gracer and play Sanctuary. This nets me two more life. And we're going to do this on my opponent's upkeep. So force these things. Doo -doo -doo. 
Maybe they have rebuke, but if they don't, I'm probably going to be happy with my spot. All right. We're crazy far ahead at this point. Sure. Time Rivaler doesn't do anything. Now they bounce the triad, okay. The fact that we have the next the next uh, saga also cover this very, very nice. Well, there's the amulet. So here's two life. Here's a dryad. And here's an amulet. And now we have access to either making a saga construct or using Boseju. Thought Raider is pretty good. And that's one of their best or their, their best draws there. I still feel ahead. Portable hole. It's probably gonna take care of my amulet, which I don't really care too much about. If we do care about the amulet, we can always just blow up the the portable hole. But I'm not even sure we care about the amulet. At least not yet. If I top the Geprami will Titan, maybe I care about. Opponent plays a land tapped second main phase. Sounds good to me. Gonna make our construct, dude. Not particularly relevant, but it's gonna allow us to pressure this Teferi. Uh, okay, so make a construct. Let's get our expedition map. And hmm. I can throw construct at Teferi. I can also play Boseju and threaten Sunhome. If my opponent blocks with everything, I can... I kind of want to save the Boseju. I really want to save the Boseju, actually, but I may just have to play it. No, but if I play it out, then I can't answer this. So I think we're just going to construct and attack the Fairy. And I think I'm going to Boseju the portable hole. And if they multi-block here, like if they th put monitor plus Memnite in front of this construct, then this is going to be an absolute blowout. Because I just blo I just uh, kill the portable hole, amulet comes back, this becomes a 4-4. Okay, so they're just chomping, which is fine. Um, I think... I mean, I can, I can go for Valakut. I think that's better than going for Primeval Titan. This would be bad against Dispatch, though. This is bad against Dispatch. I still think I go for Valakut here. Uh, we just start killing their stuff. Because this plays around, what's his name, a lot better? Which is Odawara. This does look like Odawara. So we have a fetch land here. I think I want to kill the Thought Monitor instead of, instead of the Teferi. So let's kill the Thought Monitor. Bounce Odawara, we don't care. But like this plays around... This plays very, very nicely around uh, Metallic Rebuke, which would have, which could have been a problem. Genius Smith. Okay. I mean, that's just going to die to to the Valakut. Thought Monitor is pretty good, though. All right. This is how my opponent gets back into the game. This is how they get back into the game. They just start chaining Thought Monitors. And it gets to the point where it becomes an issue. Portable Hole blow up my Construct. That's fine, I don't care. Constructs are kind of nice for that because they, they rarely matter, but sometimes they can randomly pressure a Planeswalker like we saw here. My opponent threw a Memnite in the garbage. Oh, look at that. One, two, three. So we can technically Boseju the Teferi and we can prime time this turn. I think I'm gonna take it easy instead. Like, I think that as long as we're holding up Boseju and we're killing my opponent's threats, I don't think we can really lose. So I don't want to, you know, like, go all in on um, on Primeval Titan. My opponent rebukes my Titan and all of a sudden I'm behind because I used my my removal spell on an, on an irrelevant card. And then, I don't know, they, like, get a Saga and they start pulling ahead somehow. Like, I, I just don't think I can lose. As the, as the board state currently stands. So, yeah, that, that even guarantees that I <laughs> that the Titan can be touched. So, yeah, this looks good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we can actually haste this prime time, which is nice. Garrison, Stronghold, more triggers. What a no. See you next round. Let's see what we got here. Round number two. This hand is missing a bounce land and a, a, like a, a payoff spell, so we're just going to ship this. This hand is much better. This one is only missing 
a payoff spell. So I think I'm gonna keep this one and we're gonna bottom the Gracer. So we can go turn one amulet, turn two Asusa into Triad. And as long as we find the Primeval, that's a Primeval Titan, sweet. So we play Amulet, turn two we're gonna Asusa into Castle into Transmutalary West. So my opponent's gonna need to have exactly Karn into, turn three Karn on the play. That's the only way that we don't lose, that we don't win here. Okay, that's, that change anything for us. Um, we go Growth Chamber, Asusa, then we go, like it basically allow, allows us to have a castle in play, that's the only thing that it does, but do we need that? So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play this bounce land three times. Uh, that allows me to transmute this turn. So now we play Dryad, we have to make sure that we leave the blue mana floating, and now this is going to be... Transmute mana and get summoners back to pass the turn. So now my opponent can uh, go Karn into minus on my amulet and that would maybe suck. Great creator. So I think they're they're probably gonna go for Ensnaring Bridge. Torpor Orb. Okay, it's pretty good. Torpor Orb is, is, is really, really good there. Cause now I can't play the Titan cause I'm gonna lose. So first order of business, we're gonna kill the Karn. So that's gone. Hmm. So I guess I can just play all of my lands. If I play all of my lands, this is prime time mana. And then my opponent can go Karn minus and I lose. But the same thing is true next turn. So I guess I, sh I should still go right now. And Boseju, Ghost Quarter, stuff like that doesn't do anything. I guess me drawing Boseju would do something. That's the only thing that would actually achieve something here. But yeah, now my opponent can just, you know, minus on, on Celestian Sanctuary and I would lose. But if they Boseju, like, it doesn't do anything. They can Karn or they can Oblivion Stone. They can Ugin, I mean, or Oblivion Stone. Those are the only cards that, okay. So they don't have it, at least, steering. So now they can't Karn. And Baby Karn doesn't do it. They're gonna be one short. So, Worm Coil doesn't do it either. So I think we win now. Unless they have Main Deck in Snare and Bridge. Or unless they have an answer to the Dryad, like Main Deck Dismember. Thrag Daddy. It doesn't actually do anything. So pay for Pact, see what we draw, a blank. So if I attack with this, we attack with this and this. I get Valakut plus Vesuva. Vesuva copies a bounce land. This is one land drop. Um, this is one land drop. We attack with both of these. We choose one of these targets here, opponent goes to 17. They get a beast. They block here, go to 11. Then we have three land drops, that's three damage. That's nine damage. It's not enough. Hmm. Oh no, the last, la the last, uh, yeah, I think this is lethal. So we, that's our first line, of, and we have to get a Vesuva, ba, Vesuva a ba, um, Valakut. So triggers, Valakut, Vesuva. We're gonna copy a bounce land. First stack that trigger, and we have to kill the Thraktas, otherwise my opponent gets to kill the Dryad, and obviously killing the Dryad uh, makes, this, makes this line not work. So bounce this thing. And we only have access to this line because we, we have the Asusa. So now this triggers Palakut, goes face, gonna bounce here. This is my second land drop. Again, my, my second to last land drop. This goes face. And then we're gonna bounce Vesuva once again. And the last time it's gonna copy my Palakut. It's gonna give me two triggers. Give me one over exactly lethal. 
All right, sweet. Mono Green Tron. Uh, I like Boseju, obviously. I like Emrakul, The Promised End. And they show me Conduit Creator, which make, makes me a little bit more excited about Force of Vigor. But not entirely. So let's go over my options. One Cavern can go because I'm bringing in Boseju. Um, could maybe have like one Force. We don't need two of them. And I guess if we have if we have Emrakul, we don't need Cultivator. I think I like Emrakul because it's the it's the one car that can go over the top of like basically anything my opponent could do. Because I can start using their own their own planeswalkers against them and stuff. So what do we have here? Turn one saga, turn two explore. We can probably do better than this, huh? I guess if we find a bounce land, this hand's great, but if we don't, then it's not very good. Yeah, let's ship it. This is better. It's bottom grazer. Not better than by too much, but it's certainly better. Relic of Progenitus. No idea why that's in my opponent's deck, but... Alright, Cavern's a fine draw because it allows me to, uh, to cast uh, Amulet right now. I guess Relic is better because they just have too many bad cards and not enough good cards. Yeah, so at least it cycles. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, so here we're gonna play Dryad into Valakut. Uh, I guess we don't wanna expose the Valakut. So let's just play this on Giant and say go. So my opponent could have nat Natural Tron here. That could be problematic. They don't. So many times, man. So many times I see people just Keeping seven and not having turn three Tron, I, I don't get it. Uh, that's a prime time. So float green, I think I'm just gonna, since my amulet got destroyed, gonna in giant here. Um, I think that I'm just going to try to ramp as much as I can. Uh, sweet. So there's a Valakut. And I guess I'm gonna play at Tolera West just in case my opponent has Boseju. Because then they could Boseju you my Celestia Sanctuary, and I would be off of Titan mana, even if I draw an untapped source. Ursus Tower, they found it. Karn liberated. Minus and what? My land, my Dryad, my Valakut. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the right choice. Not at all the right choice. But thanks for trying, opponent. So here's Primeval Titan. And... Um, do I have lethal? We have Valakut plus Vesuva. That is two triggers plus two triggers plus two triggers because I have not made a land drop just yet. So I think this is lethal, unless I'm miscounting. Face is indeed the place. Gonna bounce here, copy this. Yes, and you're dead. Sweet. Mono Green Tron, not having turn three on the play. See you in All right, so what do we got here? So we can go turn one Gracer into Saga, which is AKA the dream. Is that good enough? I think so. I think so. We have a Dryad, which is nice. So I think this is this is a good enough hand. Like we're obviously missing the prime time, but this can find Expedition Map if we want to. So let's go turn one Gracer into Ursa Saga. And yeah, I think that's our best option. And I think I'm playing Dryad next turn, even though that means I don't get a I don't get a Saga token, but that's not really that big of a deal. Saga tokens are more often than not they're not relevant. Sometimes they are in certain matchups, but more often than not, they they're just they're just noise. <laughs> it's much more important for me to be mana efficient and to and to deploy this Dryad than it is for me to to make a construct in most matchups. Flooded strand. Okay, so that's actively good for me because my opponent is playing the Living End and now they put a Dryad in my graveyard. So that's actively good for me. So now when I do... Huh, that's nice. Uh, What are we doing here? Explore is a little bit awkward. Um, Would I rather just make a Construct and start beating down? But then my opponent's gonna take the Explorer, so I think I'm just gonna do this. Uh, hello. 
So that's obviously a pretty good draw. So now we have a prime time next turn, unless my opponent has another grief. And then prime time clears my opponent's graveyard. Obviously, we're going to attack with Gracer here. It's just the correct play, right? It's just the correct play. Yeah, obviously our hand just worked out beautifully here. <laughs> we could have not asked for any better development that would just happen. So now we're going to have a turn three prime time. Unless my opponent can can have another grief. But then if they have another grief, they literally cannot cast. <laughs> they cannot cast Living End because then I just get back a Dryad and a Titan and they lose. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Um, now, the question here is... Do we want to haste this Primeval Titan? Because my opponent could have um, the... I don't know the name of the card. Uh, the the card that bounces a, a creature, uh, like a, the, the, the Sky Turtle. They could have the Sky Turtle. And if they do have the Sky Turtle, then I can get a little bit blown out. Am I even really getting blown out, though? Opponent cannot cast Living End here. I think we may just be a little bit too far ahead. I think we may just be a little bit too far ahead for my opponent to do anything. Because even if... I guess they can have, like, second grief into Living End. And that would be a problem. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Valakut into Bujugabog. And the reason for getting Valakut right here is so the Dryad by itself becomes a threat. So we're not going to haste. We're going to play around the Sky Turtle. And I guess we're just, you know... We don't, we don't even need to deploy this Primeval Titan next turn. Obviously, we're going to attack with Gracer because we're we're educated people over here, you know? We have manners. We have manners. Also, we have Delirium activate for whatever reason. <laughs> we have four card types in case that mattered, which it doesn't. But we do. So here, if my opponent casts Living End, they lose. If they don't cast Living End, they also lose. <laughs> Which is exactly where you want to be. And we can even force the issue. Like, we do, just don't have to do anything here. We just force the issue. Because we can just get Vesuva. So Vesuva is going to copy Bojukabog. And I guess I'm going to get, like, a Growth Chamber. going to do that. Does that do anything? How's this? Just resolves? Well, okay. Play that and say go. We don't need to deploy the second prime time, so just not going to. And next turn, my opponent's just dead. Is there a scenario that I lose here? I don't think there's any combination that kills me. May they can go... No, the grief just doesn't do it. So they need endurance. First order, order of business is... Somehow endurance needs to be involved in this. Well, now nothing matters. So I'm just going to play out Vesuva copy in Bujugabog. And see what my opponent does. So if they if they outburst here, we get back the dryad and just kill them. And now the endurance doesn't do anything because I drew the summoners back. Thanks for the dryad. <clears throat> I guess subtlety. That's a way that I lose. It's not even a way that I lose. It's the way that my opponent doesn't lose this turn. They're gonna lose next turn. Yeah. So Bujugabog trigger. I have another one. Subtlety. Nope. Okay. Sweet. Game number two, Unlicensed Herd, hers, herd. Unlicensed hers looks fantastic, Endurance looks fantastic, that's it. Me, I think I want a uh, Radiant Fountain, actually. It could matter, but Seiju doesn't do anything. I mean, it's just an attack green source, so maybe, maybe I guess it's better than Cavern of Souls, because it taps for green to cast Explore. Explore can go... I want to cut a couple of Sagas. This brings me down to 30 lands, which is a little bit low. I want to have... I also need to balance the fact that we need Endurance to... We need green cards for Endurance as well. So I don't want to cut too many green cards. I have to make sure that we have a, a healthy amount. Uh, this is healthy. 24 is healthy. Uh, I guess I'm going to cut one... Cavern could cut Tolerio West. We can Tolerio West for Bojugabog though, which is nice. 
Maybe I should just cut Cultivator, but Cultivator is just a fine backup plan. I think I'm just gonna cut Gracer. Uh, actually, Gracer works better with my two drops, so let's just cut Explore. Yeah. Either Explore or Asusa. I think I'd rather cut Explore. We are on the draw though, so maybe I should be cutting the Asusa. <laughs> so, I'm gonna keep this hand, and this hand is pretty interesting in that if my opponent doesn't grief me, we can make a very interesting play, which is we're gonna go turn one, land, turn two, bounce land, and I'm gonna discard Cultivator Colossus to hand size. Okay, they have grief, so they're gonna take my endurance and now that, that game plan doesn't work anymore. But that's a, that's a pretty cool play that you get to do against living in when you're on the draw. I don't think that you wanna skip a land drop in order to make that, game, that play, uh, but if you are, you know, if you just have naturally a way that your hand develops in that way, I think it works out pretty nicely. Um, it's awkward. Man, this sucks. So I guess I really don't want to play this side because if my opponent has turned to Foundation Breaker, we probably just lose the game. So I'm just going to Vesuva their land and next, um, next turn I'm going to play Celestian Sanctuary. They could also have Force of Vigor. So that's multiple reasons not to play the Saga on one. Sparkle of Cano. Does this even matter? I guess it does because of Bajuka Bog. So we're gonna play it out. And the, the, the Cultivator Colossus discard game plan doesn't work anymore, so it's not even worth pursuing. If they have the nuts here, we we are and by the nuts I mean like green source into into Cascader. Um, which I guess is not too nutty, it's just expectable. <laughs> If they have the expected outcome here, I think we're going to lose. We may still get there. So what are they going to do? They're going to grief my Dryad. I get back Endurance. I don't want to target them with Endurance because I want the Living End to be gone. So so no targets with Endurance. And now my opponent's going to know the top of the deck, which sucks. And they're going to put the bad cards on top of the deck. And I could shuffle, but if I do, then I don't get to Gracer. I guess let's let's see what happens with this architect of will. Also, they they messed up the uh, the sequencing there, right? Like they should have resolved the grief trigger first. So draw it down. They don't have that much power in play though. Do I want to shuffle the deck? If I shuffle, I could find. What could I find? I definitely want to play Gracer this turn if I can. Is there any land that matters? I guess Bojukebog. I can get Bojukebog and just hold it. But then if I weave on a green source, this is kind of awkward. Because if I weave on a, on a green source, then we can't grace her. It's probably worth it, I guess, because my opponent knows what's on the top of the deck. So let's just get Bog here. Find the green source like an absolute champion. We play our Gracer, and I guess I'm going to play Saga. Because it makes more blockers. Now we're just staying alive, staying alive. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That's the only thing we're doing right here. Fetch for Breeding Pool Shock. Mildly scary. Mildly scary stuff. Four mana. Curator of Mysteries. Ottawara, my dude. Okay. So we're going to block Charlotte's Agent. We're going to take 11. Block there. Take 11. Not a 9. Next turn we take 8. Another Gracer is pretty nice. Does that do anything for me? I guess it gives me two blockers, so I can chomp. I can chomp, 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 and then I can Cultivator and go off. The thing is, Cultivator doesn't really guarantee anything, which is a tad annoying. Because next turn we're getting Amulet, we're playing our land, and we are casting this Cultivator. So we're going to have max amount of lands possible in hand. Yeah, I think so. So we're just going to cast this Endurance. Just a little bit weird to cast right now. If my opponent has subtlety, we lose. So, not well. There we go. <laughs> um, three, six, eight. Well, this is this is actually really good for me, right? This is extremely good for me. Do I want to keep this on top? So now we jump here. We take three, six, eight. Yeah, this is this is really good for me. I think I want to keep the Endurance on top, because I'm going to be able to cast it next turn. So, play that, bounce, basic forest. So, 
Pass the turn. My opponent has zero cards in hand, so they need to find an answer to this Gracer or a Violin Outburst. Oh, come on. Don't have the Bounce spell. Don't have the Bounce spell. Come on. Oh, Force. Force, I guess, gets, gets rid of the Saga. So that's obviously bad. Luck. Here we go. Down to one. Can we get there? They have Force. Foundation Breaker. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, we know we're doing endurance, right? So, just back it in. Game number three. If my opponent had whiffed on that one turn, I think we actually had a very real shot at winning that game, which is pretty funny. I think that's it, though. I think this setup is the best setup. I don't think I want the second cultivator. It's definitely an interesting carve. And it would have worked out in that specific game that we just played, but... Oh, this hand sucks. This hand, on the other hand, is okay. We have the worst bounce land, which sucks, but unless my opponent has, I'm gonna keep this bottom cultivator. Um, oof, for, for a second there, I thought I, I thought I had misclicked. Maybe they have force of negation. Force of negation would suck. Also, what's his name would suck. Um, the grief would suck for us. Ba green bounce land would be great. It's not a green bounce land. We technically can cast the Primeval Titan next turn. But if our opponent has Foundation Breaker, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Foundation Breaker would suck. Um, what's his name would suck. Uh, Force of Vigor, obviously. As is, we can cast Primeval Titan, however. Please don't have Foundation Breaker. That's Foundation Breaker, opponent. Come on. Told you to not have it. All right, so there go our hopes and dreams. If I find the green source, though, we still get to play a game. That's a good one. That's a pretty good one. Okay, so let's swing. If opponent has subtlety, though, we are probably dead. If they have, like, leaving any to subtlety. I guess I didn't really get that much good stuff. So maybe it's just fine. Um, yeah, missing land drops in the 31 land deck is... It's always a feels bad. Always a feels bad moment. Sunken Ruins. You got it. Valakut. Well, that sucks because that's not a green source. So, uh, it, at least it's a land. It's something that we can hopefully tap for to make some mana down the line. But it's one of the worst lands that we could have found there. Green Bounce Land would be sick. We would have so many sick draws here. Because, like, it doesn't even tap for green, so I can't... Like, I, I'm, I'm holding a single copy of Endurance right now, which is this one. Like, I can't pack for another Endurance if I really need to. Which is pretty brutal. Is this a hardcast grief? Charlotte's agent. All right. Would you mind, please, not having a, a subtlety? They have the subtlety. Ooh, okay. Well, target you. Living and Resolves, I have a 3-4... Oh, I shouldn't have targeted myself. Like, having the SS in the graveyard is kind of nice. Okay. So, any untapped land. Uh, do I even attack is the question. I probably do because I can race with Valakut plus Dryad. Also, my opponent doesn't block, which is pretty interesting. I wonder if I... No, I, I guess I guess not. I was thinking, I wonder if I should have packed for Elemental there. Uh, if we, I should have caverned for Elemental, but I don't think that's the case because I, I still can't pay for Pact regardless, so I can't cast the Endurance. So I'd much rather make sure that if I draw like an Ursa Saga or whatever, I can cast this Prime Time. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Ugh. This is rough, man. This is rough. Sure. That's, uh, so they, they, they bounce my endurance and that stops my clock. But at the same time, it, it means that they can't live in end again. Because I just endurance. Oh, I guess they, they can't live in end until they find a subtlety. I'll just pitch the gracer to it. I guess they could also find, um, grief, which they can just hard cast. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> How is this even a thing? How am I drawing three summoners packs, endurance, like all of these cards before a second green source? I have growth chambers, I have all of the bounce lands. 
this is brutal. This is so brutal. Uh, okay, we don't want to have six here. They're tapping for, I think they just made a mistake and they wanted to tap for grief. Yeah, they're just hard casting grief. grief. I mean, we can still just, oh, curator of mysteries. Okay, that's interesting. Can we please find the green source? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I guess that's a green source. Ugh. So we're just going to play the Gracer just so we can block the stupid 2-2. Bounce and replay this. Pass the turn. Now at least we have two green sources so we can pact for another a second endurance if we really need to. I don't think my opponent is casting what's his name though. They're casting Living End because like their their board state's better than mine. Second Sky Turtle. Okay. That's a card that we can pitch to Endurance now. So we're going to take six here, which is not a two-turn clock, which is very nice. We're going to hard cast this Primeval Titan here, though. And hopefully we don't get Subtlety, because Subtlety would be really bad for us. So here's a prime time. Hard cast Subtlety is pretty backbreaking here. Oof. Okay, so that resolved. And now we can get... We're definitely getting Radiant Fountain, and I guess we can find Bojukabog? Yeah. Uh, the other option besides Bojukabog here would have been, what? Like a Bounce Land, so I can replay this, maybe? I think I'm playing, we'll say I'm playing Gracer here. It charms the Curator, and it allows me to have another green source, which is nice. And it gains me two more life. So it helps me stabilize. We still have Endurance and we have Double Summoner's Pact. So I think we're ahead here. I think we're ahead. Opponent cycles, Waker of Waves. I guess it doesn't cycle. It's like an ability or whatever, but it's cycling. Pitching another Waker of Waves. That's scary. Okay. Um, so they have one Living End that's gone. If they attack, I'm going to chomp, gain my four life while I can. Opponent passes the turn. Interesting. That's hot. That's real hot. So if you want to do anything, you have to do it now. Violent and Outburst. Okay, and now we have an option. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can just hard cast this Endurance. I think that's what I want to do. It means that I don't get the Endurance back, but it also means my opponent doesn't get their dudes back. And obviously my dudes... Their dudes are better than my dudes, so this is fine. I think it just packed for prime time. So basically everything goes to the graveyard here. Hey, we get we get our grazy boy back. Nice. Nice. Good old Gracer. We also get to exile her the thingies, which is nice. So hers is gonna resolve. Packed for primeval titan. Green mana. Here's this bad boy. And now we have a prime time in the in play and a prime time in the graveyard, which is very nice. And here I think we're gonna go for bounce. I think double bounce land actually, double growth chamber. We get back Bojukebog. And I guess we get back Radiant Fountain. So this is two living ends that are gone. Wait. Really? <laughs> this is not a good play. Unless they also have endurance. Oh, they, they just show. Oh, okay, they're just conceding, basically. They're just showing me I drew the other living end, basically. That's what that means. So that means that we win. Sweet. Beating living end always feels very good. Slow and steady wins the race. And maybe this guy also wins the race. <laughs> maybe 6-6 six, six also wins the race. See you next round. All right. What do we got here? This hand's fantastic. We should keep it. Uh, so turn one amulet, turn two, uh, turn two dryad into land, turn three primeval titan, seems pretty good. Not half bad. Scalding Tarn is probably not what we want to see. Still fine though. So we're still going to play our dryad on two. Try to um, deploy it before my opponent has access to counter spell. And I'm still going to expose the Cavern of Souls here, which basically tells my opponent, yeah, you should counter my summoners back, you know, but it kind of is what it is. Basic Island. 
consider. Okay, so this is probably, huh? Yeah, so this is Merc type. So actually, now that I drew the Tolera West, we can play this. And I think what we're gonna do, because I can basically turn this Grazer into a Cavern of Souls, right? So what we can do is we can lead on Grazer, see if it resolves. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna play like a little bit of, we're gonna bait it out a little bit. So we're gonna lead on Grazer. We're gonna see if this resolves, which I assume it will. Then we're gonna play Gruul Turf. Um, my opponent does not have I neither Archmage's Charm nor... I'm not gonna play around like Main Decker Braid. They could technically have like... So let's just, let's Pact right now. They could have something like... Um, yeah, my opponent knows what's up. <laughs> they know that I'm trying to set it up. Um, so play this Bounce Land. Very smart on them, obviously. One, two, three, four, five. That's really awkward. Still gonna bounce this, and I'm still gonna transmute for for summon respect. But yeah, obviously now the the cuts out of the bag there, right? But I was trying to set up. Maybe my opponent will get greedy, and they will counter my. They will let the pact resolve. Um. Hoping to counter the the primeval titan, and by by the sequencing that I went through, I basically made it so if my opponent wants to try to do that, uh, they are not gonna be like they, we we can just uh, turn we turn this into a, into a land draw basically. Ugh. That sucks. So we obviously can't play this Vasaju, so we're just gonna chill. Gonna pass the turn here. And hoping that nothing too bad happens to us. Second summoner's fact is not is not the worst to draw though. That means that my opponent is gonna have Delirium though, which I'm very scared of. Cause now Unholy Heat kills my Primeval Titan. And it kills my Dryad for what's worth. I'm gonna take three here because Gracer blocks Ragavan. Any land, please. <laughs> God damn it. Um, sadness. I wonder if my opponent is going to kill this. They are. Okay. So now we're, dr we're drawing towards specifically Bounce Land. A lot of missed land drops today <laughs> in this league. Lots and lots of missed land drops. Lots and lots of missed land drops. Can I find a bounce land? Because if we find a bounce land, I think we're going to win. Or we're, we're just very likely to win. We don't have that much time, however. Well, that was not a bounce land, so that's good for me. Okay, so they don't have counter spell. Bounce land. Easy. Okay, so this means that my opponent goes down one. Um, I'm gonna bounce Bosejo, I think. So here's prime time. And I think that they're dead. So I'm just gonna get Bojukabog. I could go for. Let's see what my opponent does. Um, but I could go for uh, getting Bounce Land plus Valakut, and then I packed for Dryad second main phase. The problem is if if I do that, then my opponent just chumps, and then they chump and they take my thing. So I think I'm just gonna go. We're just gonna get Valakut and Bojukabog here, and this effectively means that I'm not gonna die next turn. And then the Valakut turns the Summoner's Blacks into threats. If I had Radiant Fountain, I would have gotten Radiant Fountain instead of Valakut. I guess I could have done everything, huh? Because I have double packed, so I could have gone packed for Gracer into packed for into packed for Dryad. If I had gotten a Bounce Land. No, never mind. That doesn't work out. Yeah, maybe just going for maybe just going for uh, Lethal was was better. Like I, st I still don't think I can lose here. I like double bolt into enabling delirium off of those two bolts is the only way that I can lose here. So that's very unlikely, but who knows. So in this matchup, I like Cavernous Souls. I like Boseju. I like Unlicensed Hearse. I like the Endurances. And I guess I like Radiant Fountain because I'm planning to cut all of my Ursa Sagas. Uh, and I actually think I want this members because now these decks are playing um, Magus of the Moon. 
cutting some number of amulets. Jugibox, great. I think we can cut Castle Garenbrig. And Explore seems fine. Maybe Asusa can go. And Engineer Explosive is interesting. Maybe I'd rather have Engineer Explosive instead of Amulet. I could see that. Let's try this. Let's see how this works out. Maybe I should have one more land because I'm not planning to do amulet things. This hand is great. Keep it. DRC. Here's my Grazy Boy. I'm gonna play Slayer Stronghold. And next turn we can go Cavern on Dryad, uh, play Dryad, and then bounce the Cavern with Celestia Sanctuary, which is basically the dream. I'll block you. Opponent just passes. Engineer the explosives on one. Yeah, that's where we're basically on the same game plan opponent, which is cute. So Cavern and Dryad. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have Cavern and Dryad there because uh, this number's nice. It means that I don't lose to Magus. Could potentially lose to actual Blood Moon. Could. Yep, that's actual Blood Moon. So that was maybe a reason to hold on to this, to just keep this in play. Or just to name Giant with this once my opponent tapped out. Attack. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. My opponent has only a single basic island, so they don't have double blue. They don't have counter spell. We can pack for a Dryad. Or I guess we can just simply draw any land off the top and then uh, that any land off the top gives me Titan mana. Shout out to drawing basic lands. Shout out to basic lands. Gotta love basic lands. Any land. Dryad. Okay. Swing. Opponent takes it. Good. Take it, opponent. Here's another one of these sexy boys. Uh, we're holding up this member. Like, our mana situation is currently fixed. My opponent's is not. Now they do have access to Unholy Heat, though. Which is a little bit scary. Yep, there's the Unholy Heat. Um, I could... They keep on top. So I could Pact for Endurance here. But I think I'll just let that go. Uh, maybe I should have dismembered one of these. No, I, I still think I want to play around. What's his name? So we're taking some damage there, but that's kind of okay. Second and Holy Heat is a beating. They did keep on top. Wait, didn't they keep on top? I thought they kept on top. Now they keep on top. Okay. So my Dryads are gone. <laughs> so we're just going to Pact for Endurance, I guess. Opponent used two unholy hits so far. I'm gonna kill one of these bad boys and then I'm gonna pact. Opponent hits in response. Well, I love to see this. Love to see this. They kept on top. So now that dies. And now we pact for endurance. And we cast endurance. Do you have hit number four? <laughs> you do! <laughs> okay. All right, you got me. The good thing is now the DRC is a 1-1 one, one, and they are down to one single card. So we're gonna pay for Pact here. Oh, come on, their one card is Expressive Iteration. That's gross. <laughs> okay, and that's, you, you got me, I guess. One, two, three, four. Um, sure, let's play that out. Next turn we get to Primeval Titan. Prime time's gonna find a couple more basics. I've seen this so many times happen, which is, you know, opponent slums the Blood Moon and then they just don't, they just don't have blue mana. <laughs> I'm resolving all of my threads because my opponent doesn't have the blue mana. Subtlety, all right, sounds good. I'm gonna put it on top. <laughs> Guess where this Primeval Titan's going? Yep, top of the deck, you have no cards in hand. Yep, it's going to the top. So now you're drawing a card. Best case scenario for them is they draw another iteration. That would be bad for me. Come on, dude. Okay, Shredder. Shredder's kind of fine. I don't think I'm gonna be multi-spelling. Just gonna be playing. Just gonna be slamming six sixes. Uh, let's get a couple of basics and pass the turn. Next turn we get to swing for six. Well, that's really good for them. They just enable Illyrium just like that. Now I'm a little bit scared. Like that was the perfect combination of things that could happen. They bend a land which they otherwise would not have been able to bend. And they're, you know, they're, they're pressuring me in the air now. 
Endurance or Pact is what I want to see. So we're going to attack first, see what my opponent does. It also clears the deck a little bit. So we're just going to get uh, like Valakid. Valak like this doesn't really matter. And I guess I'm going to lead on Explore because if I find Endurance, I'm going to cast that instead. Although I guess now I can't cast the prime time because my opponent gets to shred. So maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have I shouldn't have done that. I should I should have just slammed the prime time. Yeah, I think I have to pass and hope that I draw exactly endurance. Man, I can't believe <laughs> that they enable delirium immediately. That is so brutal. That is so brutal. Oh, they have bolt in hand? Sure, of course. Alright, game number three. Ugh, that sucked. Um, I kind of like this setup, though. I kind of like this setup. Let's do it again. Maybe I should have the castle in. Because, like, we, we missed land drops in so many turns there. L let's just do this. Over expedition map. Map can find me will sage you, though, which is interesting. Or a basic. Uh, this hand doesn't have a cavern. It doesn't have a basic, so... This one does have a cavern, so we're going to keep this bottom Asusa. I'm going to play this on, I guess, on um, Beast. Pass the turn. We want to dodge. I guess if if I if my opponent has Monkey, I can just dismember it. Like, I don't love to, but if I really have to, I can. Okay. So I think I'm actually going to play Cavern on, on Elemental next turn. Which is going to be a very, very obvious Telegraph, but what do you want from me? Just trying to cast my spells. <laughs> and I have two copies of this thing. They bean and holy heat. Okay. Probably means that they are missing land drops. Bounce land is my best draw because that means I get to basic force is interesting. Huh. Basic force is super interesting. Okay, so let's just play the forest and say go. So this means that my opponent can counter the endurance, but if they do, they're not playing the blood moon, which is good for me. Also, I have another one. So this time around, my opponent is probably learning from their mistakes and they're actually playing. They do get another basic. They do get their basic. Shredder. You got it. Cast this. Graveyard's gone. Untap. Interesting. Okay. Play that. Swing for three. Pass the turn. If my opponent attacks, I'm just going to take it, I think. I'm just going to endurance on the end step. Slamming the Blood Moon. Hopefully it's Magus, funny enough. Funny enough, I have the answer to the Magus and not the answer to the actual Blood Moon. Sure, you got me. No attacks, coward. So here's an Endurance. We were playing Endurance aggro all along. Oh, nice. Um, do I just dismember here? I can dismember into Dryad, put my opponent on a two turn clock. So here's six damage. Just plain amulet tempo. Basic lands are so OP. Basic lands are busted. So that's just another threat that becomes lethal, right? Now uh, my opponent needs to block two out of three of my threats. And they are all X Force. Like this basically is them conceding, right? Because there's no one mana card that can kill my threats, and they can only block one of them now. I guess they can go like land into land into one drop and then the one drop strong blocks. Misty into monkey or whatever. I would like to kill you, please. Okay. What are we doing here? Lightning bolt my thing. You got it. How about your face though? Sweet. For an O baby. Can we get that trophy? Let's wait and see. All right, buckle up because the last one is gonna be against Yorion. Uh, this hand's pretty solid though, so we can go turn one Gracer, and we can start making constructs. Which is again, as I was saying earlier, I was talking about the matchups where making constructs actually matters. Well, this is the one. <laughs> this is a matchup where it actually matters. So we're gonna make some constructs probably. Eventually, we're gonna get an amulet off of this. I'm a little expedition map at this point. I, I guess it depends on how much value we get from the constructs. Which I think I want to get value from constructs. I think that we're gonna be enacting the construct plan. Ooh! Oh, this is taxes. Well, so I like my chances a lot more against taxes than against 
than against four color just because it is like four color is just much more just puts so much more pressure on us yeah tech edge when we're playing amulet not great um also it's kind of nice that <laughs> um Amulet's gonna do work here, I think. So let's play this, and I guess we're gonna name Giant just for mana fixing purposes. Maybe I should even be named, because we already have another green, we should just be naming um, Beast for Cultivator Colossus, which we have one copy of in the main deck. I think we're just gonna be on the, on the Constructs plan. We're gonna get to make a lot of Constructs. I apologize about that. I, I realized that I had the, the fan going on. This is kind of awkward. Like, my opponent's gonna feel of ruin me, and I kind of don't want to get a basic because that enables my opponent's tech edge. But I guess I, I, I just can't not do anything, right? We get a 1 1 here for our troubles, which is whatever. Um, so, we're gonna lead on a Susa here, I think. Play Growth Chamber, Bounce Forest. Also, they have green in their deck, which is very interesting. Play that, play that. Now we're going to explore. And I'm interested in exploring before Thalia becomes a factor. Tolerate West, yeah. So we're definitely playing out the other the other bounce land. And I'm not going to attack my opponent with Violin, like a Thalia, like a multitude of different things. So I'm not getting anything by the attacking for one. And now my opponent has a choice, right? Like, do they want to be playing around? Uh, do we want to destroy the Ursa Saga or do they want to destroy one of my growth chambers? Fauna Shaman? Wow. Okay. My opponent is on some spice over there. Jeez. So much spice. Skycliff Apparition. Yeah, that doesn't matter. So that's best case scenario, I guess. Because they tapped out of Tech Edge. They got nothing out of it. Unless they have a way to blow this up with the Fauna Shaman. Magus of the Moon. Well, now we lose. <laughs> uh, okay, that escalated quickly. <laughs> that escalated hella quickly. Um, we're kind of in trouble now. We may still be able to be down with random 6-6s. Six because we, we drew both of our basics. I'm not playing out the T-West. The reason for that is that... If I find the Dryad, I can actually use this to go find um, um, Summoner's Pact for Primeval Titan. All right, my opponent's deck is... I'm a lot more excited about my opponent's deck now. We're, we're, we, ve we may very much lose to this, by the way. We may very, very much lose to this. I maybe should have played Gracer just as a blocker. It's not like I'm getting any value out of it, right? Yorion to hand... Yoron doesn't really do anything here. I'm so scared of this Fauna Shaman though. Like, that thing's freaking me. Uh, actually, let me let me play this Gracer just as a chump blocker. I'm gonna say no here and just have six. But this is not really a chump blocker either. But Yoron really threatens to clock me, to clock me in the air. My opponent did not activate Fauna Shaman there. They have Stonefort. They have Kaldra. All right, that's probably gonna be enough for me to lose here. Uh, yep, definitely looks like enough for me to lose. And if they Yorion now, they have Solitude, is that what they're gonna get? They're gonna go get Solitude? Hell yeah. Dude, Fauna Shaman is sick. <laughs> well, now my opponent's Yorion is kind of busted. Yorion gets them a land, an another equipment, they give another exile effect, another solitude trigger. It's kind of sick. All right, take five. Block, block. I think his prime time doesn't really do anything anymore now. Boseju. Okay, I've seen enough. Main deck Magus. That's gonna do it. Dismembers. Get in here. Um, Radiant Fountain. I think I'm just getting Endurance because it lines up well against my opponent's threats. Bog is bad, Cavern's just a better card, straight up. Maybe um, Bosage is just a better land. Generic Explosives... Does this matter? Probably not. Probably cutting all Sagas. Cut Colossus, cut Asusa. 
and maybe cut one amulet, maybe two amulets. Just have the one of Cultivator. We can pack four if we need to. 81 card special. That's how you know that my opponent means business. Um, we're going to keep this hand, I think. It's a little bit awkward, but I think it's reasonable. We can go turn one Valakut, turn two Explore. Double Valakut alongside Dryad is a big deal. Opponent moves to five. So I have to expect that there's a Magus in my future. The Giver of Runes. Explore, Engineer the Explosives. Okay. So I can play an Explosive on three preemptively to play around Magus. Never mind. Uh, I, I actually messed this up. I, I was trying to set up Valakut. Yeah, I like I, I'm gonna play Dryad regardless, right? So actually, never mind. Let's do explosives on three, and we're gonna play another Valakut now. We could also play Radiant Fountain to guarantee the life gain, but if I play Valakut now next turn, I can go Dryad into Transmute. Cathar Commando. Okay, so they can't Magus now. If they blow up the explosives. Oh, they can't cast the Magus either. Huh, interesting. So all of a sudden this just got really weird. Hey, look at that boy. So here's the land, let's play that. And here's naming giant. Blue, blue, one. Transmute. We wanna do that while my opponent can't uh, kill my, uh, my Dryad with Cathar Commando. And if they kill here, that means that we do have the answer to the Magus, which is very nice. Yep. So that's good. And now we probably just get Summoners back here. If opponent does have Magus, we're going to have to spend a turn blowing up the Engineered Explosives. That's probably fine. Also, my opponent's playing Field Ruin and Engineered Explosives. I, uh, and Magus doesn't win. I just noticed that. <laughs> I guess it's a one of that they can tutor for with Fauna Shaman, so it's fine. Extraction Specialist, okay. Uh, we have this one. Is this one good? So I think I'm gonna go get definitely one basic forest and bounce land, I think so. Maybe it should have been a green bounce, green bounce land. Just gain a life and pass the turn. Maybe should have gotten another, another basic forest there. Jetmere's Garden. So I guess we don't have to worry about Leon Arbiter, right? Because my opponent's playing like Fetchlands and stuff. So I guess Arbiter is indeed a non-issue, which is nice. They could Magus me here. You know, Soul Dude is good. You know, Soul Dude is very good. Wonder if they have stuff like Haven Mind Sensor. Okay, Eorion to hand I can beat. Hey, should we pack for prime time? I think so. One, two, three, four. Still have a land drop to give here. So even if my opponent blows up the amulet in response to, to the trigger. In fact, if they do this, I'm just gonna cast a dry and win. So we're gonna do basic forest and I guess sanctuary. Bounce basic forest, replay basic forest. This also plays place around Magus very nicely. And now we assume with prime time they should win. <clears throat> Let's do bounce land and Tulare West. Always yes, always yes, always yes. My opponent can Solitude, the Dryad, we can still pay for Pact. We still have Engineered Explosives in play as well. So that amulet was kind of nice in terms of forcing the hand in my opponents and forcing them into a play that was... I mean, it's the correct play for them, but it's it just plays into what I want to do. It just plays into what I'm trying to set up. So, so I, don't, I don't know what we're waiting for here. I should just give protection from green to their thing and just take the block, and then I just kill it post-combat. Uh, let's bounce that. I think I think we still have one land drop, one land drop left. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, I, I was, I was, ugh, I was already yielded. But oh, that sucks. I'm gonna bounce this because um, we can still transmute with Dryad, even if my opponent plays a Magus. And we already have the answer to Magus in play anyway, so I don't even, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Anyways, uh, game number three. I don't know about this boy. Maybe a land is better than this guy. Just another cavern. Yeah, I don't think I like losses. Prime times where it's at. All right, game three. Let's see if we can get that five and zero. Oh. This is a weird, uh, weird deck to be to be playing for the trophy against. Love it though. Uh, we're gonna go to six here. This hand is not. 
Sand is much better. I think I'm gonna bottom the amulet. The nice thing about the amulet is that it forces my, like my opponent can just go ahead and get my, they may like discard the amulet to put, uh, <clears throat> Uh, sack like the Ikathar or something to kill the amulet, which doesn't do anything, but then they can get it back, so let's just do that. I'm gonna go turn one Castle Garenbrig, turn one Gibber. Very annoying. Super, super annoying. Ugh. That was so good for my opponent last game. So, another, if they have the red source, we're just gonna lose to the Magus, which is pretty brutal. Yep. God damn it. So we even this member doesn't do it anymore because they just have Giver. Turn to Fauna Shaman. Who would have Out of all things to be listened to, Fauna Shaman was not on my list. Let me tell you that much. Let me tell you that much. So I'm gonna name Giant here, I guess. And as long as my opponent has a stomping ground in their deck, we're probably gonna lose this game. I'm gonna play out the cavern just so I don't expose that I have a second Valakut. Uh, this is gonna name Elemental. Pass the turn. But if they have a Stomping Ground, we're probably gonna lose. Or if they have any other land in hand, I guess. Because they can fetch like a tap to what's his name here, like a Jet Mist Garden. Next turn and tap, use the green to Fauna Shaman. But I have to imagine that we're just gonna lose to Magus. Unless they don't have the land drop? Question mark? Please don't have the land drop? Pretty please? Pretty please, no land drop. Kaldra. Okay. I can accept this. I do accept this. <sighs> ding, ding, ding. Always yes, always yes, always yield. They have solitude in hand opponent. I guess they can go get solitude. They do have solitude. Pichin Gavani Dawn Guard, which I don't even know what it does. Oh, that card. Limited, limited uh, busted card. So we definitely want to float the mana here. That, um, obviously, that draw there was outstandingly good. I don't know why my opponent let me untap with Dryad. Very happy that they let me untap with Dryad. Here's prime time. And my opponent can find another Solitude, so... But if they find Solitude, they can't find... What's his name? So I'm going to bounce Deliria West here. Maybe I shouldn't be bouncing T West there because it means that my opponent can... So they can go find another Solitude, and then they pitch Yorion to... Okay, so they're gonna get Magus, which then means that I have to... I now have to get double basic, and now I have to draw... Am I getting raised here? Probably. So next turn I'm taking 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 at most. I don't even block, even though they have the free block because of Giver. So we have to top deck Summoner's Pact or... We have to top deck Summoner's Pact or Dryad. If we do... If we do top deck one of those... What does that mean for me? So that's 8 damage. Down to 4. Summoner's Pact. Okay, so... Also, my opponent did not put Yurion in hand of note. We're at 4 life. We are going to summon our spec for a Dryad. Gonna play Dryad. We can Toleria West for Engineered Explosives. We can Engineer the Explosives for X equals 3. Engineered Explosives for X equals 3. X equals 3 kills Magus. Then my mana is unlocked. I have access to an Endurance. I guess they're they're just setting up to kill they're just setting up to kill my Titan by they just drew two creatures, like creature white card. I think that's what's going on. So if I have Summoner's Pact, Pact for Dryad. One, two, three. One, two, three to transmute, one, two, three to explosives. Just don't have enough mana even. Maybe they'll solitude my prime time? Question mark? They don't. Damn it. So does that mean I need to engineer explosives on one? Or EE on two? If I EE on two, I kill both of this. My opponent gives pro green and I lose, so it doesn't do anything. So let's play Dryad. Transmute. Just lose to the Caldra. We're one turn too late. I just don't have enough mana. 
I mean, I can E on 3 and crack, but that doesn't do anything. Like, I still take lethal from the card draw. Yeah, so I'm just going to play my land and pass the turn. And I'm just going to cast this Endurance and just hope that my opponent forgets how dried of, how uh, Giver of Runes works. That's my play. Opponent forgets how Giver of Runes works. Solitude. Okay. Damn it! Opponent didn't forget how the Giver of Runes works. Man, that sucks. <laughs> it sucks that my opponent knows how their cards works work. Man, I just cannot. This season, I cannot get a trophy to save my life. This season, I simply cannot get a trophy to save my life. Ugh, brutal. All right, sadness once again losing the finals. <laughs> I just cannot get there this time around, huh? Uh, the good thing, though, is we beat all of the good decks, and then we lost to the mean deck. But we beat Living End on the way there, we, lead, we beat Blue Red Merc Die, like all real good decks uh, that we that we managed to to beat, which, which feels nice. Um, this list feels okay. Like, honestly, I, I liked it very much. I like it very much. I think that it has a pretty... Pretty nice game plan, uh, super streamlined, very, very focused. Um, there's very little nonsense in this list. Uh, the only thing that I could consider flex slots are these, these, potentially this, and that's pretty much it. Like every other land uh, or like every other card is, is kind of accounted for. So looks pretty streamlined, pretty straightforward. And as we saw during the leagues, uh, pretty powerful as well. So this seems like a perfectly fine list to take to your FNM to play at a, in some leagues and even potentially to play in some competitive events as well. I don't know if this is the 75 that I would be registering. I didn't see Unlicensed Hearst enough when it mattered. Like it was fantastic against Living when we did when we did get to cast it, but then we ended up beating Merc Tide without ever needing it or like we don't without ever drawing it. So I still don't know how good this card actually is. It's pretty good in the metagame though. Like it's just it just lines up very well in the metagame, so that's a thing to consider for sure. But um yeah, cards like Tireless Tracker, Cultivator Colossus, all of those uh, instead of Cultivator Colossus, so like cutting the Emrakul for trackers, like th those are also uh, interesting uh, potential ideas or like angles that we can that we can choose to take instead. Uh this list is good though. I think that it has the friend stamp of approval and it just worked out pretty smoothly throughout the league. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And of course, make sure you hit the like, subscribe button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.